Dear President, dear Prime Minister, honourable members, we face a series of alarming challenges that deserve the attention of solidarity of all of us. The unjust and uncalled war of aggression raged by Russia in Ukraine is triggering new crises, an energy crisis, food shortages, and these two combined will lead to an economic and perhaps migration crisis. This continent needs to get ready for all of these, and doing so while helping the Ukrainians fight their good fight. And it's quite simple. Mr. Putin must fail. Therefore, we must stand by the Ukrainian people with determination, and sanctions alone are not enough to ensure Putin's failure. Ukraine needs our heavy weapons, and here all of us have a duty to back our words with actions. There is one man responsible for the food crisis. That's Vladimir Putin. Food shortages risk many vulnerable adults and children, and they also are a risk of a migration crisis for Europe. And I'm quite certain a new migration crisis would seem very attractive to Mr. Putin, but we cannot let him succeed. We need to finalize a new European migration and asylum pact. We need a strict and fair system for the whole union to work. But we need the whole union to take its responsibility. And we need to do it now. We have waited for too long, and the next migration crisis might be at our doorstep already. The Council needs to move, and this House needs to engage in pragmatic negotiating with them to reach a deal before the end of this year. Dear colleagues, I'm worried when I read some of the reports of violent deportations. And yes, we must uphold EU law. And yes, we must protect EU borders. And yes, we must ensure Turkey abides by its obligations to us. But we say no to illegal pushbacks of any kind. In Spain, in Greece, or anywhere else. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, I hope you can agree with us in Renew Europe that the Europe of today needs to be bold so we can address the cost of living crisis facing Europeans, like the common solutions we found for the pandemic. Innovative thinking is needed to address our energy challenges. We need to boost our economic credentials by signing the free trade deals that are frozen. The deal with New Zealand last week shows us the way. Protectionism is no antidote to inflation. By investing in the modernization of our economies, by embracing competition, by improving our entrepreneurial and investment climate, we can continue to sail the ship of prosperity. Let's be bold and fight back against global economic headwinds. And then finally, dear colleagues, we see that in many countries, even within the European Union, the values and principles that breathe life into our democracies are under attack. And I will be frank, Prime Minister, as always. We are worried about the decline in press freedom and media pluralism in Greece. The warning lights are flashing. Greece now has the worst performance in the EU 27 as far as media freedom is concerned. Mr. Prime Minister, I hope you agree with me that media freedom is central to our European way of life. Every new Europe has added a distinguished Greek MEP, Mr. Georgios Kissos, to its ranks. He's sitting over there on the first row. Our family expects the voice of its representative to be heard according to European media rules and standards. We don't want to see another EU government leader slandering the free press. Because, as you know, it was Socrates who said, when the debate is over, slander becomes the tool of the loser. And we are aware that some in your political family have set a bad example. But please, Prime Minister, don't follow in their destructive footsteps. Stop it, Minister, Prime Minister, and stop silencing Mr. Kirchhoff, and stop it now. 
hold the proud of the Greek tradition of public debate alive, and you will continue to find renew at your side, facing the crisis ahead together in unity. Thank you.